Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. And Rama is here as well, and he was, uh, he's leaving. Oh, he's okay. Leaving now, he's he's going to go back to his guard, yes. guard duties. Guard. We want to thank our newest patron. We want to say a huge thank you to Miss Dora. We appreciate your support. Thank you, Dora. We couldn't do it without you guys. And again, over at Patreon, there's different levels of membership, uh, some of which do include sessions for energy work, uh, spiritual coaching, and we could even get into Vedic astrology, which is amazing to know what you came in here for. Well, one thing I know is that this is not functionally correct. Why in the world would you make a door that big? Oh, it's for grandeur. It's, you know, because the king, uh, uh, the pope, you know, whoever, they're, they're pompous. They're all full of ego. They got to have a big door. It just doesn't make any sense. And also, why would you put a latch up there where nobody could reach it? Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, if there's a latch up there and the latch is at 18 to 20 feet up or thereabouts, Who's going to latch it? Oh, well, he's got the pole over here, you know, and I don't even think he's going to reach it with that pole. And we find giant doors all over the place. Giant doors. You know what? There's giant books. Did you ever see the giant books? Oh, yeah. There's giant books out there, too. In fact, uh, mm, I think it was in... I'm going to have to research it again. It was somewhere over Serbia, Croatia. Uh, there's a big repository of these books why in the world well you get more material in there yeah i i when it's as big as the bed it just doesn't make sense mm -mm. no no it doesn't so i mean we have mysteries to uncover here we do and the past and what happened to the giants is a big mystery for some i think there's other people that have a pretty good idea of what's really going on uh, this is Michael Yan, who is apparently in the middle of a 40-day fast. That's really, um, wow, you know, that uh, that's a huge fast and, and definitely would not attempt anything like that uh, lately. But, you know, fasting is amazing, as we have said. It's amazing what it can do for you. So here he's talking to Tucker, obviously. Invasion USA conditions being set for the great G-E-N-O side. What do they mean by that? Well, again, he's been talking about how they've been bringing millions of people into the United States and also other NATO countries uh, illegally across the borders. And who is doing it? It's the UN. It, it literally is. It, it's the UN. And so, you know, he's he gives an in-depth... In uh, uh, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but um, just wanted to show you the fact. I mean, there's even flags that tell you uh, that it's the UN. I think it must have been here. There you go. If you see this, IOM, which is the UN based, you know, it's all about moving people from point A to point B, it's all about constantly erasing history. Who was the indigenous people of the Americas, or who were? Was it the ones that came over the Bering Land Bridge, they tell us, of which you have two, um, two genomes which trace back to Mongolia? No, apparently not. You know, we go way back. We go way, way back. In fact, again, all of our history is almost worthless um and i've done a lot of studying then that's worthless because <laughs> history and studying history has been one of my biggest things my entire life and uh, my mom was the same way and i think that you know at the same time when you do know history that they tell us you know their story his story then as other things pop up you you might start to notice trends you might also notice things that just don't fit a lot of people have this is this is something that's catching like wildfire out there the channels looking at our history and looking at anomalous objects and you know saying this does not add up pentagon reveals losses in a syrian attack remember uh, our troops that were in syria which they have no right to be in syria 
uh, in, in reality, um, were injured. Eight U.S. troops injured on a drone attack on their base in northeastern Syria. The reality is Syria is one of the most war-torn places on the planet. It really has been. And yes, there are biblical prophecies all about Damascus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know all about that. But again, a lot of the people that quote the biblical prophecies don't even understand what's really going on here. In fact, uh, they've bitten hook, line, and sinker on uh, the dark side and are, are encouraging the dark side without even realizing it, without having a clue that they're actually back in the wrong horse. Uh, the horse that's doing all this to humanity, and again, I should use a different word because horses are nice. It, it's mm-hmm. the, the beings behind the horses, I should say. I agree, yes. So, you know, there's, there was this attack. Eight soldiers, they say, were injured. And, and this is a big admission because they don't usually admit to uh, things like this typically when uh, they're, they're, let's just say, a little bit uninvited. Why so much war in, quote-unquote, the Holy Land, the Middle East, the Fertile Crescent area, everything from Iraq, you know, over to, obviously, Israel and and into Gaza? Uh, I mean, what's going on in Gaza is an absolute wipe, wipe out. This is New Earth. This is another channel that looks at a lot of the wreckage of these amazing megalithic structures that we find all over the world there they are there's tons of them everywhere you go really it's just a matter of how deep down you gotta go and you'll find layers of history there you'll find like arabic here and then you'll find um you might find some roman inscriptions and you might find some remnants of of evidence of giants as well and this is um, the Nimrod Fortress. Oh, you know, it's it's fascinating. Yes, of course, um, the Bible stories are based on on facts, and all, a lot of them are taken from older stories. Uh, again, who writes the history? The victors write the history, so they're going to write it according to what they want to get across, their opinions, their insights, their perspectives. They're selling you their version of history. Syria, again, war-torn. You have the Syrian civil war. Uh, this has been ongoing, you know, since 2011. You had protests and everything, and then uh, the crisis blew into a full-blown civil war. All this is manipulated by governments behind the scenes. You know, they, they arm people, they bribe people, they cause insurrections, and really, what is their bigger purpose? It's, it's multifaceted. There is an element, obviously, of making money for the military-industrial complex. That's a big, big part of it. That's what fuels a lot of, um, a lot of people's fires, so to speak. The other part of it is, is wiping away the history. And I think that's a huge. That is probably number one. Uh, and then also, of course, all the louche, all the energy, all the all this the souls that are going through and and having trauma which is going to keep them a little stuck for a while in a lower frequency <clears throat> 33 degrees north 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 33 degrees north george yeah 33 that's a number he comes up with such cute words yeah i'm making my own language is what it is Making my own language. Yeah, I'm working on, you know, the, the telepathy, which <laughs> does work with Cindy anyway. We could read each other's minds pretty well. Isn't it curious, the Golan Heights? You've heard of the Golan Heights, I'm sure. Uh, 33 degrees north. So there was, going back to um, 1967, you had the Six-Day War. Of course, 1948. You had, what are you giggling at now? Yeah, I just love your, when you make up words, they just come out and they they work. They actually sound good when you mix two words together. (laughs) You do it so well, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much, my lovely wife. I adore her. I love you too. And we love you guys. So you go back to the restoration of Israel in 1948, which again was a UN uh, venture. <clears throat> just like the immigration thing that's happening right now is, is again, a U.N. venture. 
uh, then you had the Six Day War, uh, which it w happened in 1967, and the the occupation of the Golan Heights by Israel. And also, what it does is is this area becomes a little bit off limits. There's not a lot of people that are allowed into these areas. And that gives you a perfect opportunity to go in and, and destroy things. We saw uh, the group that was named ISIS going in and destroying all sorts of different um, remnants of amazing parts of our history and archaeology. It's just heartbreaking to see statues that are thousands of years old, broken, and, and depictions of events from the past. This is what the system does in order to eradicate the history, in order to rewrite the history. I cannot state it any more plainly than that. Mm -mm. No, it's, it, you know, what I found, find interesting is uh, when you look at the walls of these ruins, a lot of times you see the writing on there. And I think that may have been an effort to uh, possibly throw off the controllers because if somebody was smart enough to get in there, and translate the writing that's actually on the walls you wouldn't have to go looking for uh, information that's under the Vatican as far as history is concerned I think if we had a good enough translators and I, I forget that one gentleman's name he goes all over the world and he does do a lot of translating and he does a really really good job uh, we need more of those we need several of those and I think it is brilliant I think with them putting the translations on the wall is an attempt to um, make sure that they can't their history cannot be covered up so the other part of the equation is us you know we're the ones who need to learn how to do the translating to read the stories that are on the walls of these buildings that are right there so I, I feel there was an effort to try to make sure that the history was not covered up um, but we we still need to do our part Absolutely. And one thing you see, too, is this area, just basically a constant warfare going on, as, as is the case in so many places all around the world. So I got a copy, an old copy of uh, this book, The Giant Cities of Bashan and Syria's Hol Holy Places. Um, this is from 1873. And it's a pastor, um, very, very uh, Christian evangelical pastor that is making the trip over to the quote unquote Holy Land. But instead of doing a route, which everybody did and still does, you know, going to Jerusalem, hitting all the, the main sites, they, they went a little bit on a fringe uh, um, trip where they're going off, off the main sites that everybody does. And what they discovered was that there was a lot of remnants at this time, going back into the 1870s, 1860s, there was a lot of remnants still of, of the giants that had not been destroyed at that point in time. And it was fascinating because this person describes his you know adventures over there, walking around in the quote-unquote holy land in an area which uh, is again uh, what we're talking about in Wikipedia it's it's primarily Syria uh, Jordan and an area that's now controlled by Israel militar militarily <clears throat> there's been several um, reprintings of this book and uh, some of them do include uh, photos and pictures uh, it's really, really cool. Uh, I love older books, and when I open up the book and it's used, and uh, and I see writing and scribbling instead of saying, oh, damn, I'm like, oh, yes, because I get to see what somebody else was studying and, and get their thoughts and, and their insights, and I like that. I love also getting books for like, you know, three ninety nine and 299 shipping uh, from wherever they're coming from because you know they might be a little banged up and old but they, they still hold the energy and in fact I feel the energy is better and one thing I've noticed too over time when they do reprints a lot of times they edit out stuff that they don't want in there so the older copy you can get the better absolutely as you can see the this particular one's got a date of 1866 
right here. So, I mean, this is this is just fun to me. This is candy. Uh, in so many ways, boy, they used to make books interesting. Look at that. You got a photo on the side. Isn't that cool? Um, but the thing that was striking to me, and this is the area that we're talking about. See, you can see right now, UN forces deployed area. They're deployed there uh, to keep the peace. No, to eradicate our history and the history of the giants, or so many people call them the Nephilim, or the Rephim, or the Anakim, which sounds a lot like Anunnaki to me, as that's the root. Uh, again, when we look to the Bible, we're getting the sanitized version. We are getting the control systems version. Uh, there will be some stuff in there that's even kind of damning and there is oh yeah there is especially when you go into that old testament oh it's interesting uh -huh. but go beyond there and um i have a hundred year old copy of a bible that has amazing uh pictures in it and it, you know it, it's interesting too because it doesn't even start with genesis uh it's and it's not the oldest book that we have either um it's just fascinating, and the system is always, always, always trying to wipe out the real history, and they do a pretty good job of it, but now we have more people than ever that are researching and going into uh, deep dive. What really happened? What is going on here? The Old Testament is a book of conquest. It is a book of uh, G-E-N-O side. Absolutely. You know, you see Philistia here, and you see these very, very biblical names. And again, Bashan is this area here. Oh, Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth. Wow, the Grand Duke of Hell, Ashtaroth. Ooh. Uh, Asherah. Uh, again, you'll, you'll find inscriptions that are older than any part of the Bible that show Yahweh and his Asherah, his consort, his girlfriend. Yeah, Yahweh had a girlfriend. You know, he he does a good job depicting these temples, uh, some of which were still standing and some of which were in ruin, some of which, as he says in the book, uh, there's not one stone laid upon the other. It, they're just so completely eradicated uh, that how did this happen? Especially in the day and age when people were just simply shooting arrows and slingshots at each other and hacking away with swords, how did it get to this point of destruction? Well, you know, the Bible does talk about the, the king of Og Bashan. Now, he was supposed to be the last of a, a lineage of giants. And Og, king of Bashan, prominent figure in biblical and rabbinic literature. Again, so if you get somebody that goes outside of the Bible, because again, the Bible is a very small book, in in my opinion, it, it it's it's not a hard read. Uh, yeah, some parts Leviticus very dry, but it's not big. It, it, again, the the Hindu scripture is so many times larger in total, but there's also a lot of books pseudepigraphal that are not included in the bible they're they're just not and you know your chances when you find some of the older copies you might find some that are not included and find little gems so book of numbers og is introduced in numbers 21 33 through 35 where he confronts the israelites during their journey to the promised land again who promised uh, the israelites the promised land, it's its Yahweh. And again, it's, it, people will just say, well, it's God. But, you know, it didn't translate originally as uh, G-O-D or even L-O-R-D. Typically, it was you know more specific, Yahweh. There was Yahweh. There was the use of the term L, and then there's the plural of L, which is Elohim. Again, it's revised constantly in order to change the whole drift of what really happened. So he confronts the Israelites during their military venture, because it was military venture and genocide uh, of the indigenous people in this promised land that was promised to them by the entity Yahweh, who again was one of what they called the Elohim, 
the mighty ones, the judges of humanity, uh, who are not from here, but but came here from above and took over uh, the planet when they came, or at least our portion of the planet. Uh, so despite his fearsome reputation, he is defeated by Moses, this giant <clears throat> who is described as 12 to 13 feet tall, is defeated by Moses. Well, Moses must not have looked like he did in the old... <laughs> in the old movies right i mean was moses a warrior the answer is yes absolutely this is a military conquest this is a military conquest this is an invasion by an outside force taking over the land of indigenous people deuteronomy 3 111 provides more details about og including his defeat and capture of his territory it mentions his massive iron bed nine cubits long, four cubits wide, so it's 13 and a half feet by six feet, emphasizing his enormous size, Talmudic and rabbinic literature. Now, this is, this is where uh, so many people that only look at the Bible, they don't go into the other stories uh, that are associated with it that give you a lot more details. According to the Talmud, he was so large he survived the biblical flood by clinging to Noah's Ark. Utnapishtim is the Sumer, one of the one of the names of the Sumerian Akkadian uh, Noah, and again that story uh, is a good fifteen hundred to two thousand years older than the biblical one at bar minimum, and probably quite a bit more than that even. So that's highlighting his immense size and strength. In other uh, passages from the Talmud, uh, his extraordinary size and strength are elaborate, elaborated upon. His bed's dimensions are cited as further evidence of his gigantic stature. It's also said that it's made of iron because wood would break underneath him. He's that heavy. You know, he's, he's, he's a big guy, let's just say. But what happened? Well, one story describes Moses, despite being half his size or less, was able to defeat him by striking him on the ankle. What? Exploiting a vulnerability. Yes, that's from the Midrash there. Uh, he's, he's also often portrayed as symbol of defiance against Yahweh's will. Yahweh, the uh, extraterrestrial invader, uh, warlord, literally. Um, he is just simply portrayed as a bad guy from the biblical point of view. But was he really a bad guy? Because in reality, what was he doing? He was defending his land against these invaders that came from somewhere else so again you know the the victors write the history and you know you're to look for moral and ethical lessons uh yeah basically the lesson you get is you don't defy uh the draconian system is the legend you know it's, it's the lesson from these legends and the fact is that what does the draconian system do it, it, it basically conducts warfare by the use of genocide mm-hmm. uh, it, it's really sad too but as mike was reading i was just sort of kind of wondering you know these giants and i do believe they exist there's so much evidence out there you can't can't simply dismiss it the evidence is too too great but you know on the world that we live in i mean just thinking about it the world that we live in it's like what did they eat i mean it seems like there would have almost had to be another world uh in which they could hunt on in which they because uh, i mean compared to them a, a cow would be just you know something on a on a on a little a little stick it would be like a, a horse devour or something it wouldn't be anything and there she goes making up words too, like the horse divorce. <laughs> horse divorce. We just are so grateful that you guys love us and get where we're coming from uh, as we do our little verbal flubs. And their coat was from Menahem, all Bashan, and the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, all the towns of Jair, which are in Bashan. So, you know, jo- Joshua is a fascinating book to read because it's all about military conquest, and it is. What you see happening in Gaza happened thousands of years ago in the same area, and it's repeated itself. This is a, a depiction of, of Og. Horse 
Yes, he's eating his horish divorce uh, <laughs> on his bed. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there, there's your depiction. And, you know, you see here, King Og of Basham was the last survivor of the giant Rephaites. And again, it talks about his bed, as you can see, you know, 12 foot tall, twice the size of the average person today. Um, yeah, it pretty impressive, but there were many of them. And again, giant bones found all over the Americas. Now, some will just put out there that they are, they're the offspring of the Nephilim, the fallen angels, and they had to be eradicated because they were evil. That's, that's again, the history being rewritten by the victors. Uh, just all you got to do is look to Gaza and the destruction of Gaza, and you see what happened in the past. The reality is, were there uh, giants that were dangerous and, and dark? And yeah, there's all different types of people, too. You know, you could run up to murderers, you could run up into saints. It's the same thing with any other being. So, you know, you had some, uh, and this is a depiction from uh, one of the versions of the book of his bed, as you can see, you know, the size and the people looking at it in awe and fascination. Isn't that cute? Um, you know, the, it's just like any other group. And then also, when you have people being exterminated, literally hunt down everywhere they go and exterminated by an invading force, uh, they're sometimes going to react with a lot of violence. This, obviously, because they're being exterminated. They might have seen the entirety of their family uh, destroyed, just as people are right in this day. All the cities of the plateau, all of Galid and all of Bashan, as far as the cities of Salika and the Adre and the kingdom of Og, yeah, big battles, you know, that raged, uh, again, that quote, this is, this is actually some remnants uh, that are still up there. At least they were when this photo was taken, because again, they don't want us uncovering their past. We talked about Jimmy Corsetti saying, what's going on? You know, why are they not excavating? Um, you know, why are they not excavating certain spots that have our history? It's all right there. <clears throat> they don't want to excavate them. And in fact, it's uh, it was in Indonesia. There is one that is even older um, than any of the others that we've been talking about forever that's not even really begun to be excavated, and they show no desire to. In fact, the governments will resist it. It's because, again, this system <clears throat> has eradicated the, the original uh, indigenous population that was here on Earth. In fact, Homo sapiens sapiens, I believe, is, is a replacement population. We are replacements. Uh, these bodies we inhabit. Here you have a depiction showing you know, various different sizes of beings. Some normal human size, some absolutely gigantic. Yeah, it was fascinating. One of the things that first caught my, uh, made my eyes pop a little bit was in the book here with the pastor, the giant cities of Bashan and serious holy places. Um, he, he starts out by talking about the size of Noah and the size of Cain and Abel uh, being, you know, 30 plus feet. And so to, that would obviously not be Homo sapiens sapiens. That would be a, a predecessor species. It, when you, it's just, to me, it's just so blatantly obvious. Uh, look to the abduction phenomenon. And when you study that by itself, what do you see? It's all about genetics. It's all about gene pools. It's all about diseases. It's all about, you know, the level of toxicity in human tissues. It makes such perfect sense. It's just so obvious. It's as obvious as the nose on King Og's face was. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's so sad when it comes to the toxins because our world is set up right now where, I mean, it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And you have to pay a lot these days to not take in toxins because it's like they charge twice as much for something where they have where they take things out or they don't add things in and we we all know that's deliberate 
So it's interesting, again, the Rephaims, they, they uh, along with the Anakims and others, you know, these were all different species of giants. There were many different species of giants. When, again, we look to the cycle of the Yugas, <clears throat> and this is why I, I trust the Vedic side of things so much more, yet I recognize, too, it's, it's also been touched by the system. There's nothing that hasn't been touched by the system, guys. They, they've done their best to make it so we can't find the truth. And yet, what do we see? Well, we see in other yugas, we are bigger. And in fact, it corresponds. The size of humans in a golden age is typically given as 30-something feet tall. Oh, isn't that an interesting coincidence? And then in the silver age, we're smaller uh, you know, somewhere maybe between uh, 12 and 18 feet. And then in the Bronze Age, it's more in that 8 to 12 feet. And then now, you know, 6 feet roughly. Again, it corresponds, but it's from a different perspective. It's because of the age. It's also because of the oxygen content in the atmosphere. Our atmosphere has been manipulated where uh, they have basically proportionately uh, lowered the amount of oxygen because oxygen is key to everything, to clear, clear minds, clear thoughts, healthy, healthy mind and body. And when there's more oxygen, our own science will tell you, you know, the reason why there were giant creatures in the past is because there was more oxygen on the planet. Oxygen, you know, the very, very, very first thing you breathe in when you are born, and it's the last thing that you breathe out. I mean, it's so incredibly important. It is so extremely life giving oxygen, water, the things that we may take for granted, those things that uh, we think are plentiful and everywhere. You notice the controllers are poisoning it slow but sure. You know, I, I, I think. Uh, oxygen concentrator should probably be like just a basic household item you know to breathe in the oxygen and get that to your brain and your mind is so helpful absolutely absolutely so you know the gnostics did have it right in in many ways much much more close to the truth uh, than a fundamentalist perspective in that the Gnostics, you know, they didn't think you needed any sort of priestly system. You just need to go within. They thought that the God of the Old Testament was Satan, was the adversary, was pure evil. Absolutely. There's no doubt that there were giants. You know, there's so many newspaper articles still out there that you can see. And, and as they keep erasing, we keep making copies. We keep sharing everybody that is on this path. You know, again, channels like John Levy. Uh, Lucius Aurelius, um, gosh, I can't think of them all. There's, there's so many out there that are doing this. I keep encountering them, uh, and I'll keep sharing with you guys because you know it's, it's not about us having the biggest and baddest channel in them. It's about getting rid of this system and awakening humans to what's going on because it is evil. It is very, very dark. I thought this was fascinating too because. He talks about roaming this area, again, in, in Syria, the Golan Heights area. He's, he's walking through here in the 1860s, 1870s, and he's encountering entire cities that are empty. There's nobody in there. And he describes the buildings. He says that they're made of stone, and even the roofs are made of stone. There's stone that has been cut in, in long lengths so that it lays upon uh, the pillars and the walls. And the entire structure is standing, and, and it's almost like you can't tell how long it was uninhabited uh, because it's so solidly built. And again, these giant doors that will allow people that are twice the height of uh, modern, modern people to easily enter these buildings entire cities that are ghost cities where did the people go i shared with you in um, this book uh enrico baccarini i think his name was and, and we've shared it several times uh it's it's an exploration on the vimanas all about the uh, aerial vehicles because there's no uh, it's it's 
perfectly clear that these vehicles are machines that people use to fly and to travel from one place to another and off planet as well. And he talks about different types of Asuras. Now the Asuras are, are dark beings that came and tried to conquer Earth. And in fact, they did. They conquered the, the part that we are on right now. And, you know, these beings are in service to himself. When they would come, they would basically conquer an area, create a temple for themselves, which was literally their house. Uh, and they demanded worship and tribute and included everything that we typically hear in the stories, like uh, sacrificing young damsels to dragons. Uh, you get the bigger picture here. Yes. Absolutely, but instead of thinking of a dragon as being four four legged and all, think think of a humanoid structured dragon, uh, as we you know think now in terms of Dracos and uh, those beings from Alpha Draconis and the various hybrid beings that are out there that are humanoid and reptilian mix. Well, you know, again, these these entire cities just empty. Where did the people go? Well, some of these Asuras experts at bio warfare and in fact it talks about uh, clouds it talks about um, all sorts of strange signs in the skies and then pestilence and plague and people are dropping like flies they're dropping like flies where they are uh, because again of the experts you know these extraterrestrial experts in bio warfare Wiping out entire populations. They, you know, again, 23andMe uh, is all about genomes and you know, who founded that connected to, you know, to the Google and the person that just left that used to, you know, be the head of YT. It's all, they're all working for the same system. It's one system. We are an occupied world. And the control system that came and conquered this planet is still in effect, just working from behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do we do? <laughs> what do we do with that? It's like they are coming in, they're doing their slow march, they're trying to push people out. But I really believe in humanity and I believe people can push back harder than they think. And I think humans, I mean, our cells are, are programmed to live. So we will find a way. Nature always finds a way, and the more we can blend with her, the stronger we become. When you look at Moses and Joshua, Moses first leading the people, and then Joshua leading the people, the chosen people of, of again, Yahweh, this is a military operation. It's a military operation. It's, it's given you how the control system took over. Because, again, the roots of all the Abrahamic system does come out of, of the Jewish system. Ultimately, yeah, it comes from the Torah. The Torah is the first five books that are attributed to Moses. Moses is a warlord. And when we talk about the system that came to Earth, it came from Mars. Mars is the god of war. And, you know, Mars, Aries, God of War, it's signified by a ram. They blow the shofar, a ram's horn. I mean, it's all just, it couldn't be any clearer. Why, why do people not see this? It's because of black magic, really. It is a God spell that has been put over on humanity. And they've gotten humanity two-thirds to follow it in one way, shape, or form. So, you know, a lot of these buildings um, were repurposed, as we see many churches and mosques that have been repurposed as just that, but they weren't originally that. They were something quite different. In fact, in many uh, cases, they were just really uh, homes and, and gathering places, or they could have still been spiritual uh, gathering places for the giants and, and other beings, too. We were used to seeing... Uh, beings of all different shapes and sizes, and even beings that were not perfectly humanoid. Some of those depictions are still available to us, and we can see the layout of uh, some of these cities as well. Oh man, there's still remnants of, of vast cities 
uh, underneath the soil that you can still see on Google Earth and, and even under the ocean that you could still see on Google Earth. These resets never stop. They never stop. I do think there are bigger ones that perhaps are about every 200 years, but it's a continual reset. It's, it's continual. The reset never stops because when we talk about uh, how the pastor was in that area and there was nobody in, in, in these cities, there's nobody. They're totally ghost towns. He spent the night and he could pick any home he wants to go into, spend the night there comfortably, and he was not harmed by anybody. There's nobody around. It's just crazy, but it's not. Because again, this is always ongoing. Some areas, uh, it's their time, and then other areas will have relatively peaceful times. Uh, here in the U.S., since 1945, you know, end of World War II, um, and even World War II and World War I, they weren't on American soil, or, or U.S. soil, I should say. In fact, we got to go back to the Civil War, the last time we had war really on our soil, and the last time we were really invaded was going back to the War of 1812, uh, which also is part of the greater uh, reset wars that, uh, that have been ongoing in fact, our civil war, really, it, it does seem that it was a reset war, um, as were so many other wars that are retold from a historical perspective, in, you know, again, through the victor's eyes, the victor's mind, and, and the victor's mouth, because they want to, again, give you uh, their story to be assimilated and imprinted into our minds. So this is that area, again, that we're talking about, makes you look at everything in a different light oh there's mount herman ah that's a famous one is it not the sea of galilee you know taming the uh the waters and everything uh, you know all these stories again the real yeshua is even grander than what we uh get from the revised perspective because he was a systems buster and he was just telling it like it is and the system couldn't have it why do you think, again, uh, all the scribes and the priests of, of, the, of the power structure that was in place had such an issue with him? It's because he was talking up uh, about the system and exposing it for what it is. You know, in fact, oh, I'm going to wait, but, you know, the whole, there's, there'll be a separate video that we'll go into with the whole... Um, thing about the messiah and uh, false prophet and all that because you know again everything is inside out and inversed but i before we close this one i want to go back and just talk a moment because there is these lines of thought that came up in my mind when i was reading last night before bed about his encounter and walking into empty ghost cities right and in this area of the world 160 years ago well the words of Alois Ermiler was going through my mind because after the war which is m maybe days weeks um, or at most probably a, a month or two ahead of us um, in earnest you know starting in earnest Alois says that when when the war stops uh, it's it then everything changes to a very high degree he says there are then so many empty houses that people will, you know, just go and they'll take what they could actually work as far as land and start to farm again peacefully. He says that we go into a much more peaceful age at which uh, we will end up having such a bounty um, because unfortunately there will be so few people left in some of these areas in respect to the houses in the farmland that those that are are left are going to be faced with you know their choice of places to live and and land to work and we're going to be going back again to a more simple way of living it doesn't even sound like there's really any technology in place um and I'll, I'll re go through uh everything that's attributed to him again pr prophetically uh, and look for more details because every time through I keep discovering new things, new ahas. 
Um, but it sounded very much like these ghost cities of the Golan Heights in, you know, in, uh, again, Syria and in Jordan. It's, it sounded like history repeating itself again, and, and here we go. It's just one more cycle in the resets. Mm-hmm. You know, and when you think about it, all of these buildings that have that are just completely emptied, and these towns, they're, they're good size. You know, they're, they're big, and there's no writings. There's, there's nothing to say, where did everyone go? what happened you know and and when i look there's this dryness of information that i don't quite understand it's a dryness and i see the ground and i see sand and i i feel wind and i'm not understanding exactly what i'm being told when it comes to where did all the people go i mean the obvious thing would be oh they buried them somewhere but where i mean bodies when they get buried they they you know you can see it you can see it or you know accidental digs you might dig up and you might find some so i don't know it's all very intriguing it's very very curious i think we're at a place where yeah what mike said could come true where there's just not enough people to fill the homes and the land that's that's all around us well um we did we did remote view the area that we were living in Um, basically, which was over on the very eastern border, you know, close to the border of um, Texas and Arkansas and Louisiana, uh, you know, the greater Texarkana area, let's say. And we we did look at it and say, um, you know, what's this going to look like 2030, um, 2035? And what we saw was um, it looked like a lot of things were still standing perfectly and, and we didn't see you know, horrible tidal waves or anything like that, but just a lot less people and a lot of abandoned buildings, a lot of abandoned houses. Um, still, it felt very, very post-apocalyptic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. We'll have to see. I think we really need to stay very, very healthy these days. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's there is light at the end of the tunnel, but right now we're going into a point where they're going to kind of turn the lights out. Uh, and we did talk about the three days of darkness before Alois talks about that as well. Um, the whole entire global situation is not what we've been told. Uh, again, we, we don't get that the earth is flat. The earth, the earth is not flat, but um, there is a lot of the points that the flat earthers make that are absolutely valid. And in many ways, they are uh they are on the ball and they do get s- some of that uh right you know as far as what we've been able to get and getting an emission from uh the galactic federation when we took a stab at some things <laughs> and this little guy this little guy is so cute so full of personality i mean our pets they are our angels that's for sure Absolutely. Look forward to your comments, guys. Please leave comments. Tell us what uh, rabbit holes you want to go deeper down. Much love. Thank you so much for your support. May you all be blessed and kept safe in these times. Namaste. Namaste.